Hi, welcome back. This is Paul Chan from the LBS. Let's begin our next video together. Welcome everyone. Thank you for continuing your journey with us at the LBS. We are now on to our ninth video. This time we will be talking about bearish spreads. Here's the agenda we've plan for you today, a quick recap of the basics of buys and sells of calls and puts that we've done in prior videos. Then we will introduce two more new strategies for you both belonging to a bearish spreads strategy families. First of which will be called a bear put spread, followed by the bear call spread. And a comparison between these two golden rules that we always never forget. And we're also going to introduce a new indicator for you to help balance our portfolio on something called on balance volume. Then today's selected stock that we will analyze for our bearish spreads are, is going to be Manulife, followed by a recap of the free tools that we have been using, and then also as well as show you the links on how to get the free options play for Canada and the one month trial for USA. So by now you should be quite comfortable with the concept of buying call option and how you'll be spending money to buy the right to the contract gives you the right to buy certain shares at a certain price on a certain expiration date that you choose and you have to pay for that. And the flip side is if you were to sell the same contract, on the other hand, you give the right to somebody else but you collect money up front. And likewise, put option, the right to sell, you can be the buyer, buying the contract and the right, and giving money to somebody else for the premium. And flip side, in video seven, we talked about how if you were to sell such a contract, you would collect money up front for somebody else to give the right to sell you at a certain strike price expiration that you choose. Then video eight, we talked about bull call spreads and how a certain stock at $72, if you were estimating the stock to continue to rise, you could be buying a call option at $72, and let's say at the money, which may cost $5.70. But we're also going to make a second trade at the same time on the same expiration date by selling a further out of the money at $2.60. So this is incoming money, and it limits your upside as well as your downside. Overall, you're spending, investing into actually $3.10 instead of $5.10. Hence, it's a debit spread because you're still spending money. And basically, all you've done is subsidize your call option purchase with the out of the money to make the cost a little bit lower. We talked about that in a prior video. Then we also complemented another one called a bull put spread, where you're still forecasting the stock to go up. And instead, you're selling a put option at $70, so maybe slightly out of the money at $2. And rather than just going as a naked put, you will be buying back a slightly lower put at $65, spending a dollar in between. Again, by doing the spread, you are limiting the upside as well as the downside risk. And now you're collecting income. You are collecting in more money than you're spending out. So that's why we call this a credit spread. And this is basically a put option sale, but at a reduced price. And we added two more strategies to our portfolio from what we added in prior video, of which was the bull call spread and the bull put spread. Both are used when you're forecasting the share price to rise. In this video, we will add two more called a bear put spread and a bear call spread, and both are used when you forecast the stock to fall. So the bear put spread, first one we'll look at, is basically used when you have expectations that the share will be moving towards the downside. So what we're doing is buying a put option at a strike price near or at the money which is basically what we discussed in our prior video five, just buying a put option, but we're actually going to make a spread out of it. So we will reduce our cost and also capture some of the upside with an expiring option 
to minimize the effects of time decay by selling a put option with a strike price slightly out of the money, so lower price. They both have the same expiration date. And so the mechanism is basically buying the put at or near the money, which costs us money, slightly higher delta, around 0.5 usually. And remember, when you buy options, time decay works against you. And we're going to offset that now by selling a put option slightly out of the money, so lower price. We, therefore, we will receive less money. It's got a lower delta, but we've got time decay working in our favor because whenever we sell put option, we want things to decay from a time perspective. So basically, the net effect is the money spent on the put is greater than the money collected from the out-of-the-money put that we sold. Therefore, this is still costing us money, hence we call this a debit spread. Here's an example. We have a stock trading at $72. So we may buy a three-month put option for $5.30. Pretty simple. But we're not going to add to it by selling a three-month $65 put, so lower price, further away from the share price. The net debit is spending $2.55 instead of $5.30. And again, here it is on the scale, selling one at 65 whereas we're going to buy that one at 72 And the net effect is 255 as a lower investment, so as a debit spread. And we basically, it's a subsidized put option. And when we put this all together into the table, here's how the mathematics looks like. On the left-hand side, if you look at the red column, profit and loss on the $72 put that we bought, if you notice, my maximum loss is $530, which is $5.30 per share times 100 shares, because every contract is 100 shares. But if the share price actually falls, we capture more value. But on the flip side, in the green column, profit loss on the $65 put sold, we collect money coming in at $2.75. So you can see anything above $65, that's the maximum income and is a uniform income that we receive. But we do have exposure on the downside. So if the stock dropped below $65, then we're at a risk of a loss. And when you take these two together with the same expiration date, as you can see, as the stock falls below 65, which is what I want, then I'm making money. But the most I can make is $445. And at the same time, should I be wrong and it goes the other way, the worst case scenario is I will lose $255. So I've got a two to one ratio, again, the asymmetrical reward to risk ratio. So I'm pretty confident in the strategy. And when we put everything together, we are limiting the upside income, but also reducing the downside risk. And again, when we compare this to just a regular scenario of buying put options, if I anticipate a larger movement downward, then I just go ahead and buy the put option. But most often, that's not the case. Downward movements are not easy to predict. And even then, when you predict, typically they are smaller movements. Because at the end of the day, these are all public companies, and if there are option markets on them, then they are of a certain sizable company. They don't typically go down that quickly. So that's why the bear put spread is a very popular strategy when you're forecasting downward pressure on prices. Also, if you are anticipating the larger movement with longer time period needed to reach the target, then just go ahead and buy a basic uh, put option. But again, if you need a shorter time frame, because once you buy the put option, time decay works against you, whereas when we are doing a spread, we tend to minimize the effects of time decay, then a bear put spread is quite useful. So the other complement is called the bear call spread. And again, this is also used when we have expectations of the stock price to go down. And what we're doing is selling a call option at or near the strike price, and then buying another one further out 
so higher up than the stock price. Both have the same expiration date. So here it is selling the call option at or near the money. We receive a nice healthy premium with a higher delta usually around a half. And time decay is working in our favor because we're selling, not buying. And to complement that now, rather than just doing a naked call, we're actually buying another call option out of the money, further out, higher than the stock price. And because it's further out of the money, it costs us less money with a lower delta. And now we have time decay working against us. And because the money received from the near the money call option is greater than the cost to buy the call option further out, we're receiving money up front. Therefore, it's called a credit spread. So here's an example. We have a company XYZ trading at $72. We will sell a $75 call for a month at $3 of incoming money. Then we'll buy one at $80 for $2. So a net cost is $1. So when I have $3 coming in and $2 going out for a less expensive call option, then my net income is $1. And because I'm collecting money in, it's a credit spread. And it's basically a reduced cost call option sale. And here's how the table looks. And again, if you look at the profit loss from the call sold at 75, as you can see, because we sold it at $3, so my maximum income is $300. But if the price continues to rise above my 75 price, then I have exposure of taking losses. But it's also offset by the call that I purchased at $80 which cost me $2 per share. So $200 is the most I could ever lose on that $80 call. But if it rises above $80, I actually start making money with the call I bought. And when I take the two together, as long as the price stays below $75, which is the strike price that I sold at, I'm making a profit of $100. Whereas my downside is if the stock continue to rise, which I did not expect, then my maximum exposure is $400. So again, when we have these two together, we are limiting the upside as well as controlling the downside. So when we anticipate a longer time frame to reach the target, we could just do a sell a, a call option on its own. But when we're a little bit more precise, a little bit more precision to get to the time frame, then the bear call spread is more useful. And the other concern is when we're selling a naked call, there's more margin room required. Whereas when we're offsetting it and buying back another call option further out of the money, it helps reduce the margin requirement. So many different reasons why we would consider a bear call spread. And when we compare these two spreads together, typically the bear call is where we're a little bit more moderately bearish, expecting more movements, whereas the bear put, we're more neutral. And again, the bear call, the time decay has a positive impact because we're collecting money in, whereas time decay works against us in the bear put spread. And as you can see, the bear put spread is a little bit more aggressive in the income to risk ratios, whereas the bear call is more of an income generator, a little bit more conservative. So golden rules to follow. Easier said than done, but buy into weakness, sell out of strength. Very important to know your entry and exit points before you buy to remove the emotions and preset your exit orders and never invest more than 5% of your capital in any one trade. So when we shop for bearish spread candidates, we're looking for stocks that have a lack of a long-term rise price pattern. And we want to be in a position where when we're getting into the trade, it has a high RSI, meaning it's overbought and it's time for profit taking so demand will fall and so will the price because we do want a downward price movement 
And then if we want to get out of the trade, we could close out our position when the RSI is hitting the low, suggesting it's going to come back the other way, depending on how long or short term your spread is. And again, we're going to be using Canadian equities for our examples, which have fantastic diversification from the US dollar, safe political climate, stable economy, and excellent bid and ask spreads for Canadian stocks, especially. Companies you would have heard of, such as BlackBerry, Royal Bank, Shopify, Bombardier, and so forth. So we will introduce a new indicator to you today, one I personally find very valuable and useful to complement what we showed you previously with the MACD and the RSI indicators, something called the on balance volume. And basically, it helps to distinct the types of buyers between the large institutional investors who buy much more volume than the smaller retail investors. So people like mutual funds and pension funds, as they move, they're like elephants. You can hear them a mile away and they do not buy in small volumes. They have big portfolios to manage. So they will have a movement on the stock price much more impact than a retail investor would. And as they drive up volume, then prices will go up as well. So this is a signal indicator. And if you look at the red trend, which is the share price, it tends to match the green, which is the movements of the on balance volume indicator. So as there's more volume moving upwards, so does the price. And as the volume reduces, meaning lack of demand, there's more supply now, prices will fall. And then you can see it come back the other way. So let's put this to the test. And we will start again with Loblaws, the company that we used in the prior example. But if you notice, Loblaws is not going to be a candidate for this particular exercise because they had a fairly stable price of which then for fundamental reasons it dropped. And then now it rose back up with MACD crossing showing that it's suggesting it's going to be further upward price movement. Then also the RSI starting to make its way up a little bit. But more importantly, look at the on balance volume indicator, OBV, is way high. And anytime you have a lot of volume, it suggests institutions are starting to buy. Now, when I look at another one, Manulife, slowly trending downwards almost from 26 down to $20 range. And MACD is showing it's rising, which recently it has in the last month. And so does RSI. But if you look at this with our OBV, on balance volume indicator, there's not a lot of volume which suggests to me then this price movement upwards will not last. So getting a second opinion from financial, it seems to concur. There's not that much strength. And historically, right around the end of the year, it doesn't really have a lot of movements. So I may want to go with a bearish spread for a short term. And we will consult with options play. Right now, it's got a technical score of six. And on my daily scans of bullish and bearish stocks, Manulife appeared on the bearish list. And of the 39 ideas, only one is bullish today. And we have 38 of them that are all bearish. So I will click on the I'm bearish button. And the very right hand panel is where it defaults to a suggested put strategy. Based on all the options chain, it's got a score of 128 in green, suggesting that we do a 20, 22 puts vertical for January 18. And what we're doing is it's a bearish strategy with a limited risk of $73, but I've got potential reward of 127. So almost double my money. So if I trade this, I'm basically buying to open a 22 put and then selling 
a 20 put further away from the money. And with my simulator, if you notice, my profit is non-existent if the stock goes up. But when the stock price goes down, it favors me. But if you notice, once it passed $20, I don't make any more gains because of the spread that I've set up. So here's basically what we're doing. We are going to be buying a 22 and selling a 20. So here's how we do this. Go back to my trading account. Again, your particular broker's interface will be a little bit different, but we will put in MFC. There are two. We want the one in Toronto, TSE. And in my options chain, I will go down and select January. And calls are on the left, puts are on the right. And looking at 22, and I'm going to be going to the vertical, making sure I'm buying puts, not calls. So I'm buying 22, selling 20 put, good to close. And if you look at the spread, I just maybe want to be a little bit more aggressive than the next guy, but I don't need to be in the midpoint or discount myself too heavily. So I will go with 70 cents. So here's my debit spread, 70 cents to buy a 22 put and I'm selling a 20 put. And when I click submit order, my order gets sent to my broker. And now let's go back and now we will do another one. This time we will do the short call vertical, which is basically the bear call spread. And here we're gonna be using calls options. We are buying a further out 22 while selling a 21. So a little bit of a spread. So the left hand panel is where this comes up. And again, if I simulate different price movements, you will notice I lose money if the price goes up, but the further down it goes, I'm good. So pretty much I want it between 21, 22 range because that's how I set up my spread. And what I'm doing is basically it's a bearish strategy with a limited risk of $48, but my reward is 52, which I collect up front as a credit spread. And this is how I would trade it. So I'm selling a 21 which is closer to the money. And then I'm buying back a further out of the money, 22. So calls are on the left-hand side, selecting a vertical. And I will select a sell, 21, buying a 22. And if the spread is between 51 cents and 60 cents, I may go with uh, 59 and just to be a little bit ahead of the next person. And here's the setup that I have. It's a credit spread. Selling a 21, buying a 22, and collecting 59 cents per share in the process. So again, all the summary of the, all the free tools that we've used in previous videos. You should be quite familiar with all of these by now. And anytime you can rewind this to click on these links to get to wherever you need to go to access all these free tools. And then you'll probably see more and more now the value of options play. And remember to get your free account here. And for the US equities, the first month free trial from either one of these links. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Continue your journey with us at DLBS. Remember, you need to learn, practice, repeat. Tell your friends about us. Please subscribe to our list on our website to get updates and trade ideas. And once you feel more comfortable, you need the next step in your evolution, try our mentoring services in our marketplace. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. Please remember to rewind, practice, repeat, and if you found it useful, please share it with your friends and family. See you in the next video.